Hello! We are finally here! After all the tweets and promos, this is Sincerely V. Hope you're excited because I know I am. Guess what? It's our first episode and trust me, you're gonna love it. This is the only show on TV where the women you are dying to hear from and know about talk to us with all sincerity. They promise to bear it all right here on this show. For the woman making our first episode, well, I will tell you about her when we get back. You're tuned into Sincerely V with me, Vanessa Jan. Welcome to the first episode of Sincerely V. I am Vanessa Jan, and I'm really, really, really excited, not only for the season, but for who my guest is today. I'm not going to, like, let you know who, but she doesn't grant any and everyone interviews, so that alone, I'm honored about. But before we get into the life of my guest, make sure to follow me on Twitter, at Vanessa underscore Jan at ETVGH. Also follow us on Facebook because throughout the season, the more interactive you are, the more gifts I'll be giving you. It's the first season. Why not give you guys a gift, right? So don't forget, follow me on Twitter at Vanessa underscore Jan, ETVGH, and of course on Facebook, ETV Ghana. Right into our first guest. I know many of you know her, right? Yes. Her name is Zilla. I, I would say Zilla Rockstone. Is yeah, that okay? Yeah, that's fine. You Zilla Rockstone. Um, and I'm very honored to have you here because, like you said, you've told me you don't grant any and everyone interviews. Yep, I do. So it is a pleasure having you. Thank you. And pleasure is all mine. Thank you. Okay, so we're going to get... Okay, first of all, you and Reggie Rockstone are like the Beyonce and Jay-Z of Ghana. <laughs> You guys have been dubbed the Beyonce and Jay Z, which is like, have we? Yes, I didn't know. Wherever Reggie is, you are. Wherever you are, Reggie is. Mm. You hold down the family unit, right? Yeah. Yes, but before we get into that aspect of your life, we want to take it back. Who you were way before you met Reggie Rockstone, right? Yes. So you are the daughter of the late president Hilla Liman. Yes, that's right? right. Yeah, yeah, right. Um, how was it growing up knowing? That's who your father was. Um, okay, well, my upbringing, that's been, that's an interesting thing, an interesting story. Okay. We didn't grow up in the limelight, oh, your dad is the ex-president living right. a regal life. No, not at all. Okay. We actually grew up a very regular, mundane life. Okay. And so in, instilled in us were very strong ideals, very strong, you know, cultural ideals and all of that right so we weren't about no about that not right. at all and it didn't help the fact that my my dad he left office not because um of a democratic election where he was overthrown or anything like that it right. was as a result of the coup okay you know and so it wasn't a very pleasant thing as okay. it were and it wasn't one of those situations where we were considered that family that no not at all okay you know we literally had to my mom is actually who really held it down okay and strived and made it work and took all of us to school worked right. educated all i think of you us. have six siblings is that correct yes we are seven. Oh, seven all yes. together plus you yes okay plus me. but i felt like we we're more because at every given moment there were cousins and like you know, so we household, grew up, yeah. the household the house was always full wow always so i always say to myself i'm gonna have seven kids i'm gonna have seven kids that was before i had the first and i realized <laughs> the reality yes. of having seven kids right you know but it was it was a fun thing because we had ourselves we, we are a very close family unit up till date we are nice. really even though everybody is elsewhere we are really 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 close we don't do anything without you know talking consulting right extremely close okay and i guess it's all of that sometimes adversity really brings you together right. so that's you know it brought us together we understood 
I mean, ourselves understood my parents, understood right. what we're going through, and then we grew up just like regular just people. Just like that. Because yes. that's what I was going to ask you, because <clears throat> people probably think you grew up with a privileged lifestyle. Not at all. Actually, actually, we spent a lot of our childhood arguing with our friends. When they say, oh, Ilima, you are sorted, they look after you, you have this, you have that. Right. People did not understand, and they still do not understand. They believe. When we tell them, they say we are lying. Yeah. When I tell them, I did tie and die with my mom, who they were the working force. I was just telling someone recently, I was like, we were the working force. Right. We used to do everything. And then, initially, I didn't understand. I'm like, why do I have to do all of right. this? You know, I didn't understand then. Now, I do yeah. understand, you right. know. So, I mean, that's basically been it. Okay. Yeah. So you grew up in a two-parent household. Yes. You are a parent. Was that something you strived for growing up to maintain both mommy and daddy at home when you planned on like having your own family? Absolutely. Growing up, there was no room or no option for divorce. I mean, it wasn't part of the vocabulary because right. as far as I was concerned, my dad was always there. My mom was always there. And right. so it was two parents, you know. It wasn't the issue of one parent is not at all. Right. And by because of my dad, I, I mean, I initially I didn't understand. My dad always at home. I used to wonder like, why is my dad always at home? <laughs> right. I know every dad is. So I Working asked him. I remember like, asking him. I'm like, why are you at home? Why are you not? Because he used to teach us. In as much as we were in school and all of that, right. he also used to teach us all the time. Math was the specialty, but every form, math, English, French, anything, he right. like handled the academics, okay. you know, strictly. And so I was just wonder why. And then he explained to me, when you've attained the highest office in the land and you've been, you know, laid back, you cannot just go and do anything. It's true. You know, so I guess we were his life and, right. you know, he took his time to tutor us in addition to what we had from school. I remember when I went to my first time, I went to, when I went to school, they okay. took me to K or something. Mm -hmm. I went and I came back showing my dad was like, no, that's the kid. I was like, what are you studying? Because I had studied that ages ago. Right. I knew everything. Right. So, so quickly, oh, quickly, again. I went to the next class. Oh. Because, no, because you literally, he had already taught me everything. Right. So, what am I still learning? Right. Like, you know? So, that was basically it. And having both of them at any, at every given moment, is it was like, inbuilt. Reggie always says to me, yeah, your family, your family. And I'm like, well, that's what I that's know. What I grew up in a family yes. unit, mother, father, you know, siblings. It's Cousins, always been like everyone that. Is, exactly. Right. Yeah. That's so interesting. I love that whole family unit and that you guys, even till today, are still very close. Very, extremely close. Because nowadays, like a lot of families, they go their separate ways. Yeah. People get married and it's like, okay, I have my own life. Mm -hmm. You know we're not that tight unit anymore so i think that in itself is inspiring yeah we are very we always sending emails we have a group we like in any, group any chat. and any and everything <laughs> right is like discussed from this person is dead to this person is this so we have to contribute for this so right. we have to do that constantly that's yeah. good so yeah. seeing how your father was when you were you know dating i would say did you strive for that kind of man before you met reggie mm -hmm. Was that what you strive for? Because you saw how your father was always there for you guys growing up. Mm -hmm. He was teaching you guys. You guys were way ahead of other kids in class because of the unit you had with your father. Yeah. Actually, to be truthful, no. Oh. I did not. I, I'm not one to fantasize about my perfect man, my perfect wedding at all. I'm a very practical person. Okay. And my upbringing was very practical. So I do not as it were waste time indulging in thoughts right. like that you know so it's not like as though i suddenly i was thinking oh my 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 guy has not at all okay and i'm pretty spontaneous okay and so i go with the flow right so if you would ask me what's my type who is my type like mm -hmm. you know physicals and all it that changes, i cannot cause... say i do not have i right. i just do not have that you know that he has to be tall he has to be, no 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 no. it's okay. not part of my vocabulary so you just it was like whatever makes you happy in a sense you, exactly you go it's for. freestyling like just embracing whatever comes like you know yeah i don't have a stereotype you know to try and make someone fit into not at all that's good because mm -hmm. that I think we all try to impress everyone else. A lot mm -hmm. of people try to. Yeah. Instead of just doing what they generally want to do to and what do. makes them happy. Exactly. So I think um, that's something that I think, especially younger girls nowadays, 
yeah trying to force it and the whole big wedding thing and yeah. that's not my thing because everyone I'm a very is like practical right person. they want this elaborate all mm-hmm. white wedding mm-hmm. and mm-hmm. but i think it's all for image in a sense it's not because it's not. of what they may personally want i actually so. think it's a waste of money yeah Extreme how was your, waste actually, of money? should i get into that now no i think <laughs> how so you never imagined the big elaborate wedding no not at, at all. all not at all ever even when I, I, I don't even even if you said to me you're going to give me that do a whole i'm not interested no 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 no, no, no i'm not it's, true. it's too much hassle too much stress waste as far as i'm concerned unless of course i always say you know unless of course you've attained your financial you've reached that financial level where it's not an issue at all once you start putting paper to pen and doing calculations and thinking about this, then I don't think it's the right move at all. Because as far as I'm concerned, right. all of that, one day, then what? Yes. You go home and then you start quarreling because yes. there's no money for this and it's there's no true. money. When you could have invested all that money in something better, so as true. far as I'm concerned, it's a very unnecessary evil yes. that people put themselves on due stress. Yes. Yeah. And I, I always tell, I tell a lot of, like my friends or I tell a lot of, you know, young girls, I'm saying, what, what is the, what for it right. doesn't it, it doesn't know what's going to make or break you you or know it's actually going to cause problems exactly <laughs> yeah you you're know. done with the wedding and it's like okay we have no more money in our pockets mm-hmm. exactly it's true. you are scraping to have it and somebody sitting there will say ah and this wasn't there right. and i was disappointed and it wasn't i mean really right <laughs> it's very true yeah L- ladies you have to really listen because <laughs> what i see all over social media on twitter on the blogs mm-hmm. everyone's trying to live this fairy tale lifestyle yeah Right. And it's it's not it's absolutely not necessary as far as I'm concerned. Right. Live within your means. You know what's in your pocket, you know what you're about, live within. Don't live for somebody else. Right. Don't let not because you want someone to say, Oh, no, 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 not right. at all. Okay. You know what you got. It's true. <laughs> you definitely do. Yeah. Okay, we're gonna take a quick break and when we come back we're going into Zilla's life as Reggie Rockstone's wife, his backbone the mother of his children, and much more. Make sure to tweet me at Vanessa underscore Jan. Follow ETV Ghana on Twitter also, and follow us on Facebook. Like I said previously, I'm giving out random prizes throughout the season. Stay interactive. Let me know what you feel about this episode and the upcoming episodes, because we have a lot in store this entire season. We'll be right back after this short break. Welcome back to Sincerely V. I am Vanessa Jen, and I'm here with the beautiful Zilla Rockstone. We previously spoke about her growing up, her not living the privileged privilege life like everyone thought, her idea of marriage, in mm-hmm. a sense. Yeah. But before we get into your marriage, what many, many know, many don't know, because I was even a bit surprised, that by profession, you are a medical doctor. Yes, I am. Right. Yeah. So what made you take that educational route? Well, it was the, uh, what, what, what should I say, inevitable. Mm-hmm. You are in school, you're a good student, you're doing science, naturally, you're doing yeah, science. Right. And then you do science, and science is actually quite limited. When you do science, and then you go out, like, what, what else am I doing? Right. It's either pharmacy. I didn't even know about biochem and all of those. <laughs> it, the options were either pharmacy or right. medicine so there was a whole big battle and mind you i wasn't forced or coerced in any way okay it's always been what you want to do do what you want to do okay. but because i had done science it mm-hmm. seemed as though it was pharmacy it was medicine so it was tech versus um legon okay and then the whole hula baloo and finally i said okay i'll do medicine okay i'll try right. the medicine and so yeah I I mean my exams I passed well right. really well and then next thing was to do the interviews I did my interview in tech okay. and then at that time Legon was not they were not doing interviews they take you for two years uh-huh. before you have to reach a great point oh, wow. pass and then go for an interview okay so guess what Legon opens before tech mm-hmm. I start Legon I go to uni it's exciting yeah. my friends it's like you know hey out of home mm-hmm. everything yeah. in school I settle in and then I get a letter. Uh-huh. Letter comes from tech. tech. I've been accepted into medical school. So oh, wow. they are calling me for an interview. So after I pass the interview, then we know. So I'm like, really? After all of this? Anyway, I pack my bags. I go to Tech. tech I do the interview. Uh-huh. And then I come back. Shortly after, I receive another letter saying I've passed. 
and then I can come to medical school. Right. I'm sitting, I'm looking at Lega, I'm like, nah, I'm having too much fun in Lega. Yeah. Like, Lega, really? I'm telling you, I didn't go. <laughs> I didn't go to tech. I said I would take the chance and I would do the two years in Lega. I would pass, make that great point, right. and then go for my interview. And yes, I did. did. I stayed in Legon. Yes, still I still enjoyed. I party, but yet I learned. Right. I made my grade point. I went for the interview, and I got um, admission into Kolebu. Nice. And so yeah, I went through the gruesome. Yeah. <laughs> the stages gruesome, before. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Training to be um, a medical doctor. So it was along the Kolebu journey that's right. when I met Reggie. That's what I was going <laughs> to ask you. At what point did you meet? Reggie Rockstone. Yeah, so as I said, it was in the Kolebu journey. That's okay. when I met him and we started dating mm -hmm. and then we got together. Right. <laughs> I mean, the story of how we met and mm -hmm. all of that is a long story. Okay, and but then, small, <laughs> small. Actually, like he always were... says, the, the very first time I met him was actually in Boomerang in the DJ booth. I was talking to DJ Black. Okay. I had gone, we had gone, I had gone to Boomerang with my friends. I was right. a party girl when I was in school. Right. So I had gone to Boomerang with my friends and I'm a dance hall person. Okay. So I went to the booth. Of course, at that time, Black was also in Legon. He was okay. ahead of me, but he was in Legon. So I had gone to the booth to tell Black, Black, Chale, play some dance hall. We want dance hall. Right. So I was in the booth. I think I, when I got in, Reggie was there. Okay. So it was there that I introduced, oh, Reggie, oh, blah, 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 blah. So right. it just, I, right. but in my mind frame, I'm thinking, okay, these people, Reggie Rockstone and his people, <laughs> I'm like, on a different level. Right. I am on a different level. So I just said my hello, spoke to Black, and I went to my friends. I don't okay. even think I told my friends I had seen Reggie. No, 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 okay. no. That was the very first time. Okay. And then subsequently we happened to meet again, and then blah blah blah, and one thing led to another. Right. And then we hooked up. And, and you've been now together now for how many years? Ten years, actually. Ten years. So yes. I think a lot of people look, <clears throat> especially young girls, even the young guys, look up to you and Reggie mm -hmm. because. It's like this picture perfect image we all see. Yeah. How have you guys been able to sustain such a strong marriage for all these years? Well, <laughs> I like that. It's been a, it seems like a fair first picture <laughs> behind the scenes. What happens? There's more the going scenes. on, of course. I mean, I guess it's respect and it's understanding each other. Right. Okay. Not to say we don't have our quarrels, not to say we don't have our mistakes. Look, Reggie is stubborn. He, right. he knows. Even before I came, we we're having a heated argument. We would argue, and afterwards, it's like normal. Yeah, how right. do I look? You know, blah, 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 blah. Mm -hmm. You know, he's stubborn. I'm also very strong willed. Right. I, I'm not, I wouldn't. In fact, he always complains that, yeah, I'm too yappy and I'm too, you know, I'm too right. lippy and, you know. But I guess there's, you get to a point where, or sometimes in certain arguments and certain whatever, you realize that one person has to back down. Right. One person has to take the back seat. That's true. And so it's about listening to each other because sometimes we are talking, we are arguing. Reggie knows I'm making sense. You right. understand? But maybe he's just been trying to be stubborn. Yes. Eventually he would concede. Right. We are arguing. I know he's making sense. I'm just saying whatever it is, you know. I listen to what he's saying. Yeah. I would, you know, I would take a back seat and do as basically we listen to each other, we respect each other, yeah. our um, each other's opinions, right. how we feel, but not to say we don't quarrel. Yes, right. we do quarrel. <laughs> we right. do actually a lot of times, but it's the ability to move on. And initially, I mean, with the transition, okay, me coming from the home I am from, yes. but yet I'm a, I've always been a party girl. Yes. So that's probably why I could, you know, relate it's to still, him because right. I've always, I've been, a, I'm a free spirit. I've right. always liked to, you know, hang out and stuff like that. So it was easy for me to relate. Okay. But having said that, the setting I was, I was raised was also a little bit different from his setting. Right. So in the beginning, it wasn't so easy. Mm, right. But then what really made me, you know, um, I don't know, made me change my views, especially when I was arguing a lot, right. was when I started working after medical school and started working in the hospital okay. and seeing so many deaths and people coming in, one minute person is dead, next minute you come the next day, the person is dead or right. you are dead somebody's rushed in dead or somebody's rushed in they die, family come, they didn't even know right. I realized that, you know what, life is too short, It is. why should we spend our time arguing and quarreling when right. we can be enjoying each other exactly. and so that's where first I made up my mind that 
that you know what all the arguments the quarrels the, they're it. all petty right, they're all really it. really petty enjoy each other and yeah. enjoy you know yourselves instead of spending a lot of time arguing and worrying about unnecessary things right. look at the positives you know and of course when you have children and all of that it's you don't different. want to go exactly yeah. you don't want to go into all of that right. you want to rather concentrate you want to do for your family for right. your kids you know make it work and obviously whatever your husband is doing you need to support because and you are definitely a supporter of reggie yes, a lot of 100%. people say you are like the mastermind behind who reggie <laughs> is there's we don't see reggie without you like i said you're <laughs> always around what makes you so supportive in your husband's career in just him being a father in life in general yeah. Well, I guess it's a team spirit thing, okay. being a team. We are a team. Right. And it is actually important to realize your strong points, okay? Yes. Between Reggie and I, Reggie is the artist. He's the artistic mind, okay? Right. He comes up with the ideas. Most of them. Not to say I don't come up with any at right. all. I do. <laughs> but comparatively, he comes up with most of the ideas. He's okay. artistic. He's, I'm the implementer. Reggie cannot implement, okay? The same way I cannot come up with half of his ideas. Right. He cannot, for the life of him, implement. So it's that team spirit. Okay. We, he comes up with an idea, we discuss. I say, no, 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 we can't do it this way. We have to tweak it this way. We have to do that this way. Right. Now it's time to implement. That is where I come in. Right. I'm the grounds person. Yes. I'm the one talking to the people. I'm the one making this happen. I'm the one running around. I'm the one doing all of that. So it's, as I said, identifying your strongholds and then, you know, working together as a team. Right. So I do not expect... I'm not going to be expecting Reggie to, let's say, we say, okay, we like this chair. We want to make it this way. I don't expect Reggie to right. follow. No. I you know automatically that's my role. Right. I call my, ah, Hassan, ah, Hassan, I want to please meet up. Come, Reggie. Right. Then we sit down. Then we discuss. I do the follow-up. I give right. the, I issue the checks. I, believe it or not, we have, for the account, I issue all the checks. Everything. Yeah, I, I definitely issue. I know, right? Reggie, Reggie, household. like, totally. Sometimes it's like, how do I know? You? I'm like, Reggie, you know I'm not that kind of person. Right. Even if you want to buy me some jewel or something, I'm like, no, we can actually use use the money to do else. you know right. something you know i'm not that kind of person that's why right. you can actually trust me to you know handle the financial yes. aspect of the business yes. you know so i guess it's understanding each other and knowing you know what we want and then working right. together as a team as and a then team because i work. know that if i do not step up and do this it will not happen right. and i cannot sit and just see it go down the drain that's right. not my nature right i would i'm busybody i actually <laughs> somebody said i am um what, what was the word he said i micromanage okay and yeah, it, it is a bad so habit much. i know i cannot i want to know everything that right. is going on sometimes i know i have to just leave it but that's not me that's not i want to know right. what's going on with the carpenter what's going on with the plumber what's going on with the... literally i right. know everything i'm everywhere but it's good. You're, you're holding <laughs> it down full 360 which yeah, is I'm, perfect I'm, I'm i'm trying but, but then how are you able to balance being a wife being a mom obviously being a sister to your siblings and still having your own independence in a sense. Hmm. Because it's I, not easy. Yeah, it's almost impossible. Sometimes you wear different hats like every minute. Yeah, I know. Sometimes I feel so tired. I'm like, Reggie, I'm tired. I'm just so tired. I want to go out. Like, Why do we have to work? Why right. do we have to do this? Why do we have to do? I guess it's seeing the kids. Uh, we have three kids. Yes. So seeing them seeing their school fees knowing that you have to pay school fees <laughs> yes. they have to get an education because i'm on the education you know so strictly right. i'm always fighting with them about studying everything seeing all of that seeing um where i've come from and even when i met reggie where we were at and trying to build and everything yeah. and not wanting to go back right. but wanting to always go up right. it's enough to like drive you like to push you you, right. you know so it's you know one minute because i don't want anywhere to fail my right. household has to be on point yes. my business has to be on point reggie has to be on point well recently i've also adopted vvip so yes, they have and to be on point. yeah so they are my other husbands i was telling my bar manager Bridget, i'm like yeah my other husbands as well so literally we're always meeting in my house right. and like meetings and this and that i'm right in the middle it's good <laughs> right in the it center. is good i know and you're, you're doing it because we look at you don't even look ever stressed even if you really? are, you always look at ease. When I see you out, you're always at ease, just making sure, sure everything, everything is, is okay. on point. So yeah, yeah. We have to salute you for that. <laughs> oh, thank you. And I'm we're blushing gonna take, underneath. You're what? I said, I'm blushing underneath. Oh, really? <laughs> <laughs> we're going to take a quick break. Mm -hmm. And when we come back, I'm going to get Zilla's advice to girls who aspire to be just like 
her. You're tuned into Sincerely V. I'm Vanessa Jan, and I'll be right back. Welcome back to Sincerely V. I am Vanessa Jan, and as you all know, I'm here with the amazing, the hardworking Zilla Rockstone. We've been digging into her life as a mom, as a wife, as an entrepreneur. There's so much to learn, and obviously, like I was saying before we went to break, there's girls that look up to you. They want to know how you're able to do it all. So what advice would you give to someone even like me? I'm still young that wants to have it all one day, the, the family unit, my own business, my kids, everything. Um, hmm, I don't know if I'm qualified to be giving this I advice. I think you are. But <laughs> I can say my own little small thing based on my experience mm-hmm. and where I've come so far. For starters, I, I, I believe strongly in education, okay? Right. And so the girl child. And so the good news is that... Mm-hmm. We, um, world over we're always looking out for the girl child okay and so education is key do not think i think that the girls of today are on men the man has to always do the men giving the money just going to they literally sleep around for no it's not about that at all it's about you yourself your independence get an education make the most of it you know and then as you go on strive to make it yourself independent women right. do not always rely on, on them the because man. i always say why is it that the man always always like yeah the man has to do right yeah you also also strive you're supposed to support yeah you know and whoever you get together with whoever you marry whoever you 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 know you find your life with you have to support fully right. especially when you do have children because for most yeah in our in our culture in our setting children are almost a must right. you know <laughs> but in everything is the support learning yes. to support your husband learning to be that backbone yes. learning to do whatever needs to be done you know to make it work yes. okay and so basically yeah that i would say and getting your uh, your priorities right all the material things put aside and i think especially <laughs> these days with the material things that's all a lot of females are thinking about about i know but there's so much more to a name brand bag mm-hmm. or going to the most expensive restaurant so, there's so much more and then so much more. they feel like men they f- the women feel like that's what the men want but in all actuality they want that independent woman who they know god forbid something happens, happens yeah. she can take care of the house she can take care of the business exactly right yes i'm um, your friend you know we can discuss issues we can you know put our heads together and make things work she can right. support me she can check on my accounts without having to you know you know you know yeah. like literally and he should be yeah. able to trust you exactly right. you know so i mean the girl should stop thinking about how the men can provide for them and actually think about how they can provide for the men and the family yes and that would make it work yes so when the man is not there you At are there you, you stand can. tall yes. yes you can support you don't have to rely on anybody right make it yourself be that you know? backbone also you yes. shouldn't just exactly on him. yes exactly it's so true yeah so what else you you always have something going on like we said what else do you have in store maybe this year that we can look forward to um, yes, I know if I don't mention Django and put Django, I'm wearing my Django t-shirt. Yes, yeah, and I actually have to get one of those shirts. I know, number of people who are asking. <laughs> <laughs> um, well, the year has just begun. Yes. Truth be told, we haven't exactly put paper to pen and put together, you know, our whole itinerary. But yes, we are still open. We just decided, I told my people, look, we've been, we worked the whole Christmas. We are tired. Yes. So usually we are not open Mondays and Tuesdays. Okay. But I said, you know what, let's take Wednesday off as well. Because I know it's not, after the whole Christmas, it's going to be a slow ride. So we are off Monday to Wednesday. But then we are coming back from Thursday. We are open. Yes. So we are open all weekend. We are there. Actually... We might be having a huge concert next week Ooh. with uh, Grams from um, 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 how could I even forget his, his group? Of course, I was having a big argument with Reggie about it this <laughs> the morning. Argument. I'm telling you. <laughs> I was, we were discussing because we were trying to put together. We are, we are still talking to put together something for okay. next week. But I guess we just have to tune in to Twitter, to Instagram, yes. to, you know, to find out yeah, what's going on because yes. we are always trying to put something new because the game is tough <laughs> it is tough that you have to keep it there's a, yeah there's a lot of competition out yes. there so you need to be innovative and always coming up with something new yes yeah. but thank you so much i think you are just someone we all sh- if any female should look up to because you definitely are able to manage it all we all strive for that so Aww. just thank you for continuing to be an inspiration to not only me but 
to many girls out yeah. there. Okay, so thank, thank you. you. I didn't know, but but now you know. <laughs> <laughs> so thank you so much. Okay, thank you too. I appreciate and I appreciate the platform you've given me as well. Thank you. Ever grateful. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> this was the first episode. I'm excited. I think we've kicked it off in a big way. Next week I have the internet sensation Efia Odo sitting right in that seat. Make sure to follow me on Twitter at Vanessa Jan. And a huge thank you to Aya Morrison for my look. She's sponsoring me this entire season. And of course, Phyllis Mensa for hair and makeup. You are tuned into Sincerely V. I'll be back next week. Mwah, mwah.